Hi guys. Oh, unbelievably, it has turned into a spectacularly gorgeous fall morning. And I do mean over the top beautiful Monday morning in the fall of 2021. That would be Monday, October 25th, 2021. And uh, <laughs> I mean, the Lord, anyone who saw what I was up to yesterday, I am heading to uh, to Brother Basil's place to borrow his gator, a little motorized, in my case, uh, dirt moving cart to move some dirt around this planet to uh, continue making my flood control channel. I'm making a, I'm raising the levee out behind my house trying to hold back the flood waters headed our way and a uh, couple of you have uh, brought up this whole issue of permits uh, about the work that I'm doing uh, requiring permits from uh, the New York Department of Environmental Quality I think is the the dreaded DEQ and uh, you know I have I, I'm an eco-nazi all right uh, I have mixed reviews on, uh, on on various environmental permits now especially when it involves wetlands okay now there, there seems to be some confusion about what is going on on my on my property uh, <clears throat> so it actually dates back seven years I understand there it used to be that you, you know the the level floodplain part of my property just went up into the uh, <clears throat> Here's a perfect example of uh, what the DEQ allows. Uh, so let me just give you an idea of what probably was done with permits. This is the creek, you know, just up from the uh, where they came in here last year with their bulldozers and just ripped out rammed through here with their bulldozers uh, I mean right up destroying every bit of riparian vegetation uh, along the along the creek ripping out every tree uh, and uh, Putting in all of this uh, rock rip wrap. I don't know if you remember the environmental carnage where they came in here, and I'm quite sure this was done uh, with DEQ permits. This was done by the uh, road, the Candor New York Highway Department road crew, uh, headed up by this fellow named Kevin. I don't know Kevin's last name, but Kevin. So what Kevin did uh, seven years ago as a gift to the old lady who lived in my house, he went in there because, you know, the house had flooded sounds like four times. And so what he did seven years ago, he began this job of, uh, and, and he went out and started this flood control channel uh, right along you know the very back of the property along the uh, mountain side where it comes into the floodplain and he and so he pushed some dirt up you know creating this levee for when the creek overflowed back there I am quite sure uh, Kevin had no permits whatsoever to do that so it sat like that for seven years so what he basically did is uh, he just went through and, and made this ditch okay he, he made this ditch there there would be water in it 
you know, after really, really heavy rains. And when the creek overflowed, it somewhat stayed in his ditch. But, you know, it was a real half-assed job. He just did it on the side to help out the old lady. Uh, so then, the uh, it's also the family who was living in the house. That, that was their garbage dump back there. It was a... Uh, Good Lord, that the shit that we dragged out of there last summer. So it was a big garbage dump. It was just this. It, it, it was a drainage ditch, but it it wasn't deep enough to you know to turn into a pond or whatnot. And it sat that way for seven years. And uh, so then last year. <clears throat> You know, I dug the, the main pond, and uh, the guy who built the pond, you know, I asked him about permits, and, and he, he just laughed, and he goes, permits? Uh, he goes, I've been uh, digging ponds here for 30 years, and I have never heard of anyone requiring a permit. My guess is there is not one pond in this county built with a permit. Uh, so what he did, he created a wetland where there was no wetland. So he did that with the main pond, and then later in the summer, I created the, uh, I dug the uh, bog garden. <laughs> uh, I dug the bog garden uh, later in the summer, further creating a wetland where there was no wetland. Before we started this process, uh, it, it, it was a weed-strown, garbage-filled ditch that had the biodiversity of a, uh, probably of a cornfield, and so what happened after the creek came out of the banks uh, during Hurricane Fred, I called the head, I called Kevin, the head of the road crew who started the project back seven years ago, and he came out and visited, and he was the one basically who designed that plan. So, you know, he, he said, what you need is to do what I did. It was, it was the road crew's uh, guy's uh, advice on, on how to do that. And that is what the fellow who came out yesterday did. And, of course, he never mentioned the, uh, the word permit. And uh, so what we have now, especially with what I created yesterday come next spring good lord that place is going to be a next spring and summer is going to be a gorgeous thriving wetland ecosystem uh, I, I have turned a weed strewn garbage strewn ditch into a vibrant freshwater wetland ecosystem you know it's full of fish good god fish frogs turtles crawdads salamanders newts uh dragonflies all sorts of uh, all sorts of water insects you know we have great blue herons and belted kingfishers out there a flock of ducks uh comes by quite often uh, so all of this crap about permits, I, I don't know uh, if, if what we did required a permit from DEQ or not, since we were not altering a wetland. We were creating a wetland um, that was not an existing wetland. Uh, so that is what we have done. Now, of course, now that we've created it, if, if somebody in the future tries to alter it uh, and turn it back and you know, tries to fill it back in, they would have to get a permit, ironically. Uh, but yeah, the, 
the Department of Environmental Quality. Uh, you know, I mean, the eco-Nazi part of me uh, is in full su support of them. Uh, the planet nibbler part, now, you know, when I bought that place, all of the neighbors were cheering because since I owned the property on both sides of the creek, they thought that I was going to go in there and uh, get a permit from the DEQ to take a bulldozer in there and just make a, you know, a major flood control, I mean a major fucking flood control channel out of that whole place and I'm, I'm talking right in the middle of the creek to get a permit to absolutely destroy that section of the uh, uh, of the creek like they did down the street I've shown pictures of what uh, they did of what my neighbors down the street where they went in there and absolutely I, I mean obliterated off the face of the earth a hell of a lot worse than that little thing I just showed with DEQ permits now you do need a DEQ permit to obliterate a, a trout stream in New York off the face of the planet, but uh, my guess is if I went in there and asked for one, uh, they would grant it to me. Uh, you know, the same thing as, it, it, like down in Florida, so what happened to me down in Florida, uh, among several things is, and I think I've had this rant before, is what I, I, I guess my $5,000 fine, if you want to call it, <clears throat> this is what they have, at least in Citrus County, Florida, and this is probably true in most counties in Florida, probably most counties anywhere now, they have something called an environmental impact fee. And that means before you turn one shovel of dirt, that if you buy a vacant lot in, uh, in at least Citrus County, Florida, I can only speak for Citrus County, I mean, before you turn one shovel full of dirt, uh, before you bring in power, before you dig a well or a septic system, before you fart, uh, on that property, you pay a $5,000 environmental impact fee. Uh, just, I guess, the, the stewards of Citrus County figured that's fair. You come in here and uh, obliterate some uh, whatever uh, here on this property, and $5,000 ought to cover it. <clears throat> so what I did... <coughs> is you know I went in there <coughs> and built a 12 by 16 foot uh, little outdoor kitchen and an 8 by 10 foot storage shed illegally you know with, without permits they're actually built to code they're very well built buildings <coughs> but I and, and I probably would not have had that much trouble getting the building permits from the building department. They probably would have been fairly easy permits to get since it was, it was such a tiny little job I was doing. <clears throat> but uh, before they would have granted me those permits, I would have had to uh, get a get this environmental impact uh, permit. How about, I wonder what the permit that these people got for doing all, doing all this out here on Buffalo Road. Good God, how about that permit uh, to be a fucking redneck? <coughs> but <coughs> before the building department would have granted me the permits, I would have had to pay <coughs> this $5,000 environmental impact fee for putting those uh, two buildings on my property. <clears throat> so now, uh, of course, they've levied 
uh, and so so what I'm gonna do my <clears throat> my idea is I'm gonna go down there and I'm gonna <clears throat> take down the buildings I'm gonna restore my lot back to a vacant lot and bring the damn building inspector or environmental health guy and say what buildings uh, the, the lot uh, is the same as the day I bought it and uh, we will see if they uh, take away my $5,000 environmental impact fee but as I've said in rants before again this is how Citrus County Florida works there's probably anywhere all right so if you buy a quarter acre lot in Citrus County Florida and you put up a 400 square foot tiny house uh, on your property uh, you are going to pay a five thousand <clears> dollar <throat> environmental impact fee <coughs> damn it <clears throat> for building this uh, <clears throat> for building your 400 square foot tiny house five thousand dollars okay if Elon Musk were to move to uh, to Citrus County, Florida, by you know by a 50-acre estate, uh, build a 20,000 square foot mansion, an Olympic-sized swimming pool, uh, tennis courts, uh, a, a fucking bowling alley. A, uh, a private airport, uh, you, you get what I'm saying. Uh, if you go in there and, and pretty much uh, destroy 50 acres uh, of land, if you're a rich person, you're going in there and, and destroying 50 acres of land in Citrus County, Florida, guess what your environmental uh, impact fee is? $5,000. What the $5,000 environmental impact fee is, it's, well, it's revenue generation and it's, uh, it, you know, it's to keep the riffraff out. They don't want people, they don't want uh, poor people uh, or, or people, you know, wanting to build tiny houses or whatever. Uh, it is a way to keep out the riffraff and to uh, just badger uh, regular folks. Uh, you know, five thousand dollars to these goddamn uh, <clears throat> millionaires and billionaires is like five dollars to the rest of us. So now, of course, what I'm going to do. is tear down those buildings uh, that I got busted for uh, in Florida and bring them up uh, to New York and just rebuild them on my property. Uh, obviously not getting any permits. Uh, it's apparently the, the law is you need permits if it's bigger than 144 square feet. Uh, the tiny house we're gonna build is, is eight by 10, it's 80, so it doesn't need any permits. And uh, the 12 by 16 kitchen is 48 square feet over, uh, which supposedly and these it's, it's a fucking screened in kitchen okay it's got no power no plumbing no nothing it, it is a screened in kitchen 48 square feet bigger than the uh <clears throat> that you need a permit for so what they do in this county at least so i was uh talking to this neighbor of mine who i actually met on pile of fish uh <laughs> one of my neighbors we found each other on pile of fish uh <clears throat> so what happened to her 
is so she built a 20 by 20 so 400 square feet so she built a 400 square foot off-grid tiny house uh, on her property and I don't know what all else but uh, so she went up there and, and did that and uh, she did get busted by the county for it and so she's just looking at the guy. The guy's actually a nice guy. He's actually a friend of mine. Uh, so she just laughs at him and, and, and says, Marty, what the fuck are you going to do about it? Uh, and uh, he goes, I'm not going to do a damn thing about it. And so she was all acting all high and mighty and she got her tax bill. Uh, she got her tax bill the next year uh, and it had gone up eight thousand dollars. Eight thousand dollars. They uh, they reassessed her uh, her property uh, after she built this tiny house and uh, her, her little barn or whatever, and uh, they raised her taxes by eight thousand dollars is how they handled it because they don't want her to knock those buildings down and uh <clears throat> you know the building inspector told me last year he was out here uh when i was thinking of, when i was thinking about building you know a 20 by 20 foot you know a 400 square foot house up on the up on the hill out of the floodplain and uh i, I was bitching about the price of the permits. Look at this crap. Uh, I was bitching about the price of the permits and stuff, and he, and he laughed, and, and, and he goes, dude, he goes, I'm not the guy you need to worry about. He, he goes, you're probably looking at about $2,000 uh, dealing with me. He goes, but, he goes, but if you come up here and you put this new house up here, my taxes are $1,600, uh, he goes, you come up here and put this new house up here, uh, he, he goes, you, you can watch those $1,600 a year taxes fly out the fucking window, that your taxes are going to go through the fucking roof, and uh, you're going to be paying those every year uh, for the rest of your fucking life. <clears throat> and, uh, so I, you know, I took his advice, and, uh, he told me just to make do with the damn Hambone Hilton. Uh, you can get this thing, and I, and, and this is true in, in other towns, it called, a said I could get a rehab permit on the Hambone Hilton. With a rehab permit, you need to leave one original board in the house standing. It's a $25 permit. $25 for a rehab permit for your existing structure and as long as you don't add any square footage, my house is 384 square feet, uh, their taxes don't go up. <clears throat> you get a rehab permit uh, and your taxes don't go up a penny, so I actually uh, w w was glad to uh, <clears throat> have this conversation with uh, you know, these building inspectors. They're not always the bad guy. Uh, I mean, th this guy is actually pretty cool. We'll see uh, what happens if he if I bring these two buildings up from Florida and he finds uh, my screened-in kitchen exceed, you know, 48 square feet, I guess what I could do is just, uh, is literally chop off uh, the last four feet of the kitchen, just go through there and chop it off, and I bring it down, back down to 144 square feet. And uh, they can go fuck their permits. You know, like anything else, guys, it's a double-edged sword. But anyway, it is a gorgeous day. 
in the end times today and uh, gorgeous day for moving some dirt around to build to raise your levees while you still can I highly suggest you get out there and raise your levees while you still can my guys 